There's so much to talk about, about the United States, the political class, uh, the Twitter, Elon Musk, uh, and the revolting software engineers in San Francisco. I can hardly stop myself from rolling these words. I wish I could devote the next hour to talking to Nico House, but I can't. But we'll make the most of the time that we've got. Nico's been a guest before, and he quickly became one of my favorites. He's the founder of MCSC Network and host of the political radio show, Mi Casa e Su Casa. And he joins us now from the United States. Nico, uh, welcome back. Where do I start? Do I start with the president's birthday? Is he in fine fettle? Is he looking ready for the next six years running your country? No, he looks like it's about to fall over any minute, honestly. It's it's sad watching him talk. I'm not going to lie to you. It really is. I don't know why the Democratic Party and his family even keep putting him through this, but just let that put them out of his misery and let him leave off this. But, you know, how are you going to keep laundering billions of dollars into Ukraine if Biden isn't in power? <laughs> Well, that's right. Uh, but the Republicans now control the levers of investigations uh, in the Congress, and they're bound to get busy, aren't they, on Biden? Uh, after all, there's no shortage of material. Uh, leaving aside his mental fitness for office, there's his role as vice president in the coup and in interference in Ukrainian political affairs. There is his son, Hunter, uh, and his business activities in Ukraine. Uh, and there's, uh, well, a hundred other uh, issues that they could well get busy on. Aren't the Democrats worried about that? So unfortunately, I don't think that they're worried about it because I believe it's a political sideshow. I believe that this is largely retaliation for what the Democrats did to Trump and the Republicans, bringing about the... I mean, admittedly, frivolous impeachment. Don't get me wrong. There are plenty of things to impeach Trump on. They just chose something frivolous to impeach him on because it was really, once again, a political sideshow to drum up controversy ahead of an election. And I believe that that's what we're seeing again right now. I think that because the Democrats, Democrats have the House, they're trying to go for the jugular because they do obviously want the Senate back. And then, of course, they want to win. Uh, come 2024. But I don't believe they're actually going to do anything. I believe that they had a plenty of things when it came to Benghazi and Hillary, a lot of things that they didn't even talk about, uh, and nothing came of it. The reality is that even some of the Republicans are involved in a lot of the scandals that have taken place in the Ukraine. They're involved in a lot of the money laundering schemes. And at, at best, they let a lot of it slide. So you would have, end up implicating a lot of powerful people in the Republican Party as well as the Democratic Party. And when it comes to power holding power accountable, at least when it comes to the United States, it just never happens. It, not, not, not anything significant anyway. We've had this information about Hunter Biden. They could have done something about it while Trump was president. They could have done something about it while Biden was running for president. And yet they chose not to, despite having the power to do so. So I don't, I don't really have high hopes for that. Uh, I do believe that it, you know, enough negative controversy could benefit them politically. But as far as any substantive accountability in that regard, I don't think it's going to happen. What about the latest uh, uh, scandal? Um, 40 million pounds was donated uh, by the now collapsed uh, Ponzi scheme uh, of one of the pillars of the Democratic Party establishment. Uh, and at the same time, that pillar was stealing perhaps as much as $10 billion from as many as 5 million people. W wouldn't the you know, Republicans be fools not to seek to exploit that? Well, well, Republicans are fools, George, so let's just go ahead and clear that up. But, <laughs> but that entire situation is actually bizarre in a lot of ways, and it's mostly bizarre because of the established pattern that we've seen. A lot of people don't really see a lot of red flags when you see companies like this come out of nowhere. The moment that they, that uh, that exchange was able to buy uh, the, the Miami Heat basketball arena uh, because of how successful it became out of nowhere, and then a crypto exchange ended up being publicly traded on top of all of that, 
that should have raised red flags because we saw the same thing happen with Amazon. And we know Amazon is in the pocket of the CIA. We saw Google come out of nowhere and take over Yahoo. We know Google's owned by the CIA. We saw Facebook come out of nowhere and take over MySpace, out of literally out of nowhere. Once again, tied to the CIA and that Inc. Utel venture capitalist firm out of Arlington, Virginia. So this actually is not as crazy as people might think it is. What's What's pretty crazy to me, however, is how quickly everybody made the connections between the Democratic Party, the money laundering, and FTX, and of course the ties uh, from the guy who just got arrested uh, to all the Democratic Party uh, elite. That's what's interesting. I do feel like the Republicans should take advantage of this, but I don't think they will. I just don't believe that they, because it, it comes back to this, right? Say they lose again, and then the Democrats retaliate by then holding them accountable. You're going to have a back and forth. We already we're in the middle of a back and forth right now. But if you actually hold somebody accountable for any of the things that took place during Joe Biden's presidency, then you have to face the reality that if you choose to stay in office and you're one of the rhinos, then they're coming for you next. And it's just going to be a, a, ping, a ping pong effect that I don't think the Republicans genuinely want to deal with. Do you think that that will apply to the current legal moves against Trump? that they will not go all the way with Trump because that might lead to the possibility of uh, of the bitter being the biter uh, at yep. a later date. You think that that too is just showmanship? 100%. You can even look at the impeachment of Trump. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but Tulsi had abstained and she actually voted to censor Trump because when they introduced articles of impeachment, it was about him bullying Zelensky, which wasn't true. In fact, funny enough, it was Biden who was actually guilty of threatening to withhold money from Zelensky for not firing that prosecutor. But when Tulsi introduced articles of impeachment, it involved bombing Syria without investigation that turned out over a chemical weapons attack that turned out to never have happened. It was about selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then, the, of course, they turning turn, them turning around and using them in Yemen. It was it was I mean, she, it was a long list of things that Trump actually had been guilty of. And these were impeachment worthy offenses that the Democrats didn't even touch because they were approving the funding for that stuff. They were supporting the bombing of Yemen. In fact, they, the only problem that they had with the bombing of Yemen at the time is that Trump didn't get their permission first or not Yemen, excuse me, Syria. They, that they were just mad he didn't get their permission first. That was the only complaint, not that they didn't feel they needed to be bombed. So everything that they could have impeached Trump on, the Democrats were equally guilty of. And so once again, you're going to see this ping pong effect if anyone is genuinely held accountable. And I do have to say once again, it's probably a lot of the reason why you don't see people like Bill Clinton going to jail for being involved with Jeffrey Epstein, even though we know for 100% fact that he absolutely was involved with Jeffrey Epstein, right? Because if the Republicans start calling people out in that regard, then you don't know who in your party is going to be affected. And it just rolls downhill from there. Yeah, it's two cheeks of the same arse as I uh, <laughs> have uh, described them. That much is, uh, is clear. But there is a race between these uh, two cheeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I want to ask what your take on it uh, is. First of all, um, it, on the Republican side, uh, Trump has announced uh, that he's off and running. Now, he might be serious or he might be simply trying to make it more difficult for the uh, US government to pursue him on criminal charges. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But if he is serious about running, do you think he'll win the nomination? And if he does, what happens in the election? So I do think he's serious. Uh, he's been going on basically a campaign tour for the last two years at this point, or last year, excuse me. Uh, I don't think that the charges will stick. I think he knows that. I think that they were bringing about the charges in order to threaten him and maybe coerce him into not running. And it just didn't work. Um, I do believe that he can win the nomination. And a lot of the reason why is because the, the, the Republican Party kind of needs him at this point. And I do believe that he's going to have a focus on election integrity, which is interesting because I do have to give him some credit. He was actually telling people to stay in line during the uh, midterms. Uh, he was telling people, uh, helping people understand their rights, uh, telling them not to basically tell them to be aware so that they're not cheated. And he actually didn't make it about himself, which is weird for Trump. So he might be showing some maturity in that regard. And then on the other side of that coin, you have Ron DeSantis, who is also 
uh, even though he has his problems, obviously, as well. He's also an avid election integrity, uh, 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 I guess you would call him an activist, because he's actually fired people for violating election integrity laws. So when you have both of those people actively campaigning uh, and making sure that people are aware of election integrity, well, then at that point, the best person going to win, or at least the most popular person going to win. And with the party that Trump threw in Mar-a-Lago, I think that Ron DeSantis had a, a rude awakening. He had a wake-up call because all the fans that he had accrued over the last couple of years due to his, uh, I would say, favorable COVID policies. I lived in Miami and Ron DeSantis actually did a very good job handling COVID. Uh, but all those people that that love him, they were at Trump's campaign speech, his, his opening speech. They still love him. And there's a vested interest. I mean, I know literally people who became millionaires because Trump ran for office and was a president. Like they're not giving up their cash cow for somebody who basically is popular for running a very similar type of campaign as Donald Trump. They're not going to settle for one B when they can have one A. So I think that Trump will win the nomination. I believe that with the intense in, uh, focus on election integrity, that he actually has a chance to serve another four years. And to be quite honest with you, I just would prefer that than having Joe Biden be president because this is yeah been... me too. I just I just uh, <laughs> said so uh, uh, some minutes ago. Um, a lot of us are laughing. Uh, others are throwing up their hands in horror and clutching their pearls uh, about Elon Musk and Twitter. Not just the return of Trump to Twitter. But the avowed, we'll have to wait and see if it, it actually turns out to have been true, but the avowed intention of the billionaire Elon Musk, I hope he's still a billionaire by the end of this. Uh, well, actually, I don't hope he's still a billionaire. The, the U.S. government will make sure he's still a billionaire, don't but, worry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he will. Um, uh, what, what's your take on it? How, how horrified are you by Elon Musk's tenure as the owner of Twitter. So let me just say, I'm super happy Trump is back on Twitter because it was kind of boring without him there, George. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. I'm ready to be entertained again. So I'm going to just say that. I will give him credit for allowing him to be back, although he's not really doing anything. I mean, he just said he put out a poll on Twitter and then people said, yeah, we want him back. And then he let him back. I mean, you're just allowing free speech, I guess. But I don't actually support Elon Musk owning Twitter. I think that people are really not paying attention to just how influenced he is by the federal government and his connections within the federal government. SpaceX was supposed to be a civilian project, and somehow that turned to him getting billions of dollars of Pentagon contracts in order for him to create a weapon that could transport wep or excuse me, a, a ship that can transport any weapon system uh, within an hour to any part of the world and launch. Like. That's not OK, people. Uh, also, I mean, he didn't even start Tesla. He just had a hostile takeover once again. So nothing that Elon Musk has like, I don't I don't, I don't want to say he hasn't earned anything, but yeah, basically he's never earned anything as far as his billionaire status is concerned. He is another one of these pawns like Jeff Bezos, who was part of a failed company. And then the United States came and bailed him out. Tesla wouldn't even be successful if it wasn't for the billions in subsidies that he was getting at the state level and at the federal level. And so he takes this money that he gets, he reinvests it into something like SpaceX, which by the way, you can, you can only invest in <laughs> if you, if you invest in Google, because Google actually owned SpaceX, which is once again, owned by the CIA. And now that same guy who is that tied up with the CIA is in charge of Twitter. How much do we actually believe that there will be a positive outcome at the end of the day? Because the billions that he invested, that he used to buy Twitter, that's billions that came from the government. And eventually the chickens come home to roost. Uh, and when these elections go down and they will get crazy and they will get controversial, especially with Trump running again, Joe Biden being just as horrible and abhorrent as he was uh, this, uh, this term, they're going to start telling him to pull the levers. And we'll see how the world reacts. But he is no outsider. And I wish that people would stop saying that. I do believe that he's over attacked sometimes by liberals for the silliest reasons. I think that you would agree. But at, on the other side of that coin, he is dangerous. 
He's a very dangerous man. And what makes him so dangerous is that he's been able to give off this appearance as if he is an outsider when he is, in fact, not even close to one. In fact, I would say he's even more dangerous because he's the only guy that can have all these millions and billions of subsidies for Tesla here. And then simultaneously, he he actually is the only one, the only person who's, I guess, technically American that owns a, bi a business, which is Tesla, in China that was allowed to stay open during the pandemic, and he doesn't have to have a Chinese business partner and partner in order to keep it running. That is how tied in he is with the most powerful governments in the world. And that doesn't bode well for us when he's the one who's now going to be in control of, I would say, probably the most important marketing tool that we have in the world. Nico House, a pleasure as always to have no you. No problem. And when you're looking for that Most America on Friday, let me know, man. I'll keep everybody entertained. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're definitely, if I get it off the ground, you're definitely one of the uh, hosts of the uh, show. I promise you that's already uh, penciled in. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, man. Nico, Thanks a lot for having me. And uh, the best of luck.